Hey, what's up guys, I'm Josh. And a couple days ago, I reviewed this, which is a Topping DX5. I unfortunately made a little bit of a mistake. See, I knew that I had this up for review, which is the DX3 Pro Plus. Now at that time, I didn't know what they had changed over the standard DX3 that I reviewed a couple years ago. So it turns out that they've changed just about everything on this unit, and it's no longer the same DAC amp that it once was. Now because of the changes that they've made to this, they've made it extremely competitive, if not very close to the same as this for about half the price, which makes this a very, very good option if you're looking in the topping family of DAC amps. Not only that, but this is also possibly the best $200 DAC amp that you can buy today, even if you include stacks. We're gonna talk about all this today. I'm also gonna bring up a $600 audio file system that I think would be killer as a pairing with this. So let's talk about the old DX3. I reviewed this thing a couple years ago and this new one has almost double the power going from one watt into 32 ohms to 1.8 watts. They've also internally changed from their old school amplification style to their new NFCA tech, which is again featured on that DX5 and is again on most of the modern new topping amplifiers which is a great improvement over the previous generation. Much cleaner signal, better dynamic range, much better specifications. Uh, the measurements for this thing are insane for a $200 DAC amp stack like this. Now, one thing that they have done is they've changed the DAC from an AKM 4493 DAC chip to a QCC 5125 chip, which again has improvements for DAC specifications. Now on the DAC end, this does have RCA out, uh, and it does have two coaxial ends, an optical end, a USB end, and Bluetooth. So the inputs on this haven't changed, and this also still comes with a remote, which is a killer deal for 200 bucks. Now on the front, where we start to see slight separations from the DX5 is that they only have an unbalanced 3.5 millimeter output for headphones. Now the deal with this though, is that this 3.5 millimeter has the same output power as the balanced output of the DX5. So these things are very comparable. And on the DAC end, I'm sure there's differences, like there's technically measurable differences, but as an amplifier, they sound very, very similar, um, if not the same. I think for the majority of headphones, you will not notice a difference. I think the majority of listeners will not notice a difference between these two. I barely notice a difference, and if I'm being really honest with myself, it's probably placebo. Now, there are still benefits to the DX5, like the balanced outputs of it. This can still run truly balanced headphones, uh, whereas you can't really run real balanced with the DX3. So there are still some benefits with the DX5, but it's becoming much less of an appealing value compared to the DX3 Pro Plus. Um, some other notable things on the build, the volume dial is amazing. I just love that sound so much. It clicks, obviously. Uh, the outside aesthetics and build is exactly the same as the old school DX3. It comes in silver and black. And uh, the build of this for a compact $200 unit, I think is perfectly fine, though it does have an external power brick. Should be aware of that. So what it seems like compared to the old DX3, compared to its predecessor, this is a notable improvement in both specifications, sound, and power, while still having the same aesthetic and feature options and the same price tag. So from my perspective, Topping did an absolutely killer job making a successor to the DX3 Pro. So let's talk about sound quality and power. So NFCA is really impressive and uh, it's just got a super clean noise floor. Like you don't hear anything coming out of these amps at all, even with the most efficient IMs, it's really crazy. Uh, the dynamic range is incredible. The tonality is very clean and clear and seems to be unbiased in terms of flavor. So. NFCA stuff is very, very good. I don't think that the DX3 is any exception to that. Explaining the sound of NFCA is um, kind of like explaining what glass looks like. It's kind of difficult. Now, before I get into the audio file build, I do want to compare this slightly to uh, something like a Magni and a Modi stack. Now, the Magni and Modi stack, especially if you include the price of an RCA cable, will actually cost quite a bit more than this relative to its, its total cost. You also will not get Bluetooth. You will also not get a remote. Um, and it's gonna be a stack, not an all-in-one. I think stacks and all-in-ones appeal to different people. So 
that may be a benefit or a drawback to some. You also get to save yourself from having two power bricks with this. This also has more input options than the Modi, and some of the specs are better on this unit. It doesn't quite have as much power as the Magni does, but I think the signal is cleaner, and I think this will run things like IEMs a little bit better, as well as some middle range planar headphones like uh, some really efficient Odysseys or the new Hyphman XS, for example. So I think this versus a Magni Modi stack is actually looking like a better deal to me personally. This is the one that I would personally pick. Another comparison, if you already have a DX3, is this worth upgrading to this unit? I'd say if you're willing to sell your old unit and make up like, let's say a hundred bucks of that, only costing you out of pocket a hundred bucks to get this, yeah, I'd definitely do that. Uh, this is a notable upgrade. Um, this is a very, very good amplifier for $200. So I wanna bring up an audio file build that will cost you about $600, but will give you just about everything you might want from your audio system. And that's gonna be two headphones. One is closed back and one is open back. And these are going to really cover all the territories of sound that you might want. One is gonna be the HD 560S, and the other is going to be the new Rode NTH 100. So I've been trying to figure out what to do with the Rode because the Rode is a professional use case headphone that has a little bit of a uh, not very forward top end, at least my unit. There's been a lot of reports of very strong unit to unit variants with this, which is unfortunate, but it's got excellent mid range and excellent bass response, but a slightly smaller sound stage. Now the NFCA stuff, in my opinion, has excellent top end control. And so I think that a headphone like this really benefits from that top end control and that clean tonality, especially if you're gonna be using it for professional use cases. That DX3, I think really helps with this thing's uh, existing shortcomings. Now for about 150 bucks, this is a well-built closed back headphone with good isolation. Um, I would be a little aware of the ear size on this, but overall I think this is a fair priced, good closed back headphone. Now the 560S, the reason why I'm pairing these two together is because they come with two very different versions of sound. This is more, and it can be used for professional use case if you want to, but this is more of an audiophile headphone. This is a very good top end for the money, um, very good bass response, really good positioning for the mid-range, not quite as full and textured as the NTH is in the mid-range, but it's still very, very good. But more importantly, it's got you covered with things like sound staging and kind of width to uh, an environment. This HD 560S can really show you a lot of those things that you would look for in a higher end headphone. Now, neither of them also require a absolute buttload of power. So with something like the DX3, you have a ton of headroom and you also don't need to invest in any extra cables because they both come with either an adapter or a cable that's 3.5 millimeter. So for a system that I think total cost about 540 bucks or something like that, this is a pretty killer combination system. Overall, I'm super impressed with not only the spec performance, but the actual listening impressions and the input capability of this DX3. This is a really killer unit. The only drawback that you might have, and again, this is probably a totally fair compromise at this price range, is that it doesn't have a absolute ton of power. So if you have a super inefficient headphone, things like the old school HE6s or something like that, things that aren't really relevant to most people, you may want a little bit more power out of this, but for the vast majority of headphones, this is gonna be plenty. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.